Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Okay. Um, the house and the Senate, I imagine, are out for the Christmas season. We'll have to come back in January to start working on the budgets. When I was last throwing on Mike Johnson in the budgets, I was seeing him having some problems. Not a surprise, being that the, the house has a bunch of extremists in it. But uh, one of the things that came up was like a Three of Wands card. And after the reading was done, I was wondering if that Three of Wands card was representing funding bills for Israel and Ukraine. So I did a little quick reading on it. This, this information is about three weeks to four weeks old. But it looks like uh, the Republicans are trying to tie uh, funding for Ukraine with changes on the border. In other words, um, rebuilding the wall on the border, preventing parole from people that crossed illegally in the United States, that sort of thing. And the other thing with the Israel uh, funding, the money that they're giving to Israel, they want to take it from the Inflation Reduction Act funding for the IRS. Because that makes sense. You know, you can make that, that correlation. You know, they say, oh, well, we have to, if you want to protect Ukraine's borders, we have to protect our borders too. <laughs> yeah, they're not really related. But the Israel one's even funnier. It's like, I guess to protect Israel, we have to defund the IRS because uh, Israel has an I, an R, and an S in it when you spell it, maybe. <sighs> Entertainment purposes only. Um, what challenges <laughs> is Mike Johnson going to face <clears throat> with these bills with his fellow Republicans in the House? <laughs> Schumer's not exactly taking these bills up, and Biden's threatening to veto them. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, the Senate um, is a bipartisan group in the Senate trying to figure out the, Isra the Israel aid. But they haven't worked on Ukraine yet. And when I saw that three of wands, sorry, when I saw that three of wands last time, I was thinking it was Ukraine related. But you've got Israel in there too, and I don't want to neglect um, Israel from this conversation. So, Mike Johnson, um, funding bills, we'll start with Israel. Uh, what challenges are you going to face in uh, the House with that? It's the world. Uh, bringing things to an end, worldwide conflict. A lot of countries in the world looking at it. <clears throat> the U.S. pressuring Israel to bring this to a conclusion. Maybe he's actually able to uh, get the Israel bill passed. Let's see. But it's bringing things to a conclusion. <laughs> Death card. Bringing things to an end. It might be that by the time they get ready to pass this, uh, some of the maybe the hostilities, if we're lucky, the hostilities between Israel and Hamas have come concluded. Wouldn't that be nice? Planning next steps. Death card in the world. Don't want to bring the funding? Want to kill the funding? Uh, let's see. How does the IRS even factor into this? I don't even see where the IRS factors into this. Okay. Those are some big cards, though, huh? In the past... We have the Seven of Coins, contemplating the funding, how much money, where to get it from, so on and so forth. You know, the House Republicans now don't want to print money. They need to find it from some other place. You know, never mind the debt that you threw the U.S. in when y'all were in charge. Now you're the party of fiscal responsibility again. I guess only when the Democrats are, <coughs> are involved. But this is a harder thing for them to... Um, it might be that they give up the fight to try and tie the IRS uh, funding to this because the Republicans are really campaigning to help uh, Israel out, especially because Israel has a very far-right government in place right now, and uh, I think they want to support it, and they might be more willing to drop their terroristic demands in order to get that. Current situation of the moon card. Yeah, I think there's negotiate there's there's things that we don't know that are going on with Israel. Um probably Israel and Hamas, Israel and US uh foreign policy and the funding that's going on for it. I'm I'm really curious to see what's going on with this. It's three major arcana now. Oh, 
Oh, the Nine of Cups. I'm not sure if that's... Uh, is that Netanyahu? My first thought when I saw that was Netanyahu and removing Netanyahu from power. There's just stories that we're releasing today that they're using AI to show that Israel is dropping bombs in areas they said would be safe for Palestinians. And they're dropping 2,000 pound bombs over there, which I don't think are necessarily, they could be precision guided, I suppose, but the explosion won't be precision guided. <clears throat> Negotiations in the back, in the background with money. Where are we going with this? In a pause, arrest. <clears throat> I think what I'm getting here is that the U.S. is going to ask Israel to, to, to stop hostilities. They want to bring hostilities to an end. Um, you know, one of the things that would help Israel is if we're funding them. If we're not funding them, that kind of slow things down. We, we've we been trying to negotiate with Israel, <coughs> give them suggestions on what we would like to see happening over there. But the problem is um, <coughs> Netanyahu doesn't want to listen. <laughs> He's very much, you know, a right-wing tough guy that was uh, that's um, going to show those Palestinians the what for, but all this information's coming out about how the Netanyahu government knew that um, uh, money from uh, other areas was funding the Hamas uh, uh, a terrorist organization, and that money was allowed to come in because it undermined the Palestinian Authority, which made, uh, from Israel's point of view, Palestine weaker so that they were divided. And um, that that decision, you know, <laughs> that's going to fall on his shoulders. There could very well be negotiations to remove this man from power that's going on right now. It's on, yeah, it's like Netanyahu's um, <clears throat> tenure is coming to an end. The it, it, This would be the security, you know, um, the evaluation going on. There were security leaks, um... Now they're talking about flooding tunnels, dropping bombs indiscriminately. <clears throat> this is all being driven by Netanyahu. And I think there's negotiations going on with the U.S. and such. It can also be that there's other groups within Israel. He's, Netanyahu is not popular in Israel at all. And they might be looking to remove him from power. If that's not what this is, okay, so that's kind of that. If this is just strictly on budget, they want to um, talk about uh, funding them probably for a year and, you know, just do it in one go. How much money do they need? They don't know right now that, uh, how much money needs to be in. I think that they want, again, they want to tie it to IRS cuts. But, you know, how crazy do you want to be? Do you want to get this funding through or do you have to have your way with it? Now, obviously, with the Republicans, they want both, Right. They want to take all the money from the IRS and give it to Israel. And here's Mike Johnson sitting on top of everything, trying to work with the crazies, the, uh, the Freedom Caucus and such in there. But there's background negotiations going on. And this is going to be between the Senate, the House, and the President as to what can be done. I think these are the bipartisan uh, negotiations that were happening in the Senate. Um, at the end of the day, <clears throat> I think things calm down with these negotiations. They're a bit more thoughtful. The, the, the rhetoric dies down and they probably pass the funding. Maybe they get some money from the IRS as a compromise instead of, you know, all of it, 25% comes, like if it's a four divided by three type of thing. But um, I think the funding for Israel will be a much more quiet, easygoing affair as far as that goes. And again, it could be that the fighting ceases or, you know, there's a ceasefire. I know that um, uh, there's been a push for a ceasefire. I think it was uh, through the United Nations. And the U.S. is really pushing on that one. I haven't read on that story. But I think this, um, this negotiation in the 
congressional budgets going to be easier to get through. Again, if hostilities cease, then all of a sudden you're not funding the military complex. Maybe you're helping funding um, rebuilding and things along those lines, humanitarian aid. And you may not be forced to, I know, again, the, the, the GOP is going to try and, you know, make it into a talking point and, and leverage their, their two-person majority. Uh, uh, but I just don't think, and they don't, own, they don't own the Senate, they don't own the presidency, and they barely own the House. Now, this is one of those issues that um, they can get all, all, all Republicans on board so it can pass the House with their two-vote majority. They can get that through for Israel funding, but um, <clears throat> yeah, Ed Schumer's not going to go for it. The president's not going to go for it. Um, so this is the time for McConnell to uh, talk some sense into Johnson as to what they can reasonably do and what they can reasonably not do on this one. Let's do a little four card. Will uh, Will McConnell be able to? Um, reason with Johnson for, uh, for I guess what I call reasonable negotiations with the, the with the Democrats in the Senate and the president. Biden has certainly shown that he's willing to negotiate with uh, House Republicans um, and Senate Republicans, Mo more Senate Republicans because House Republicans are just crazy. Um, there's the burden card. So it's like, yeah, he might be able to do it, but it's going to be kind of a challenge. So it was, will McConnell be able to talk sense to Johnson? There's the world card. Yeah, McConnell's going. Yeah, McConnell's going to say, "We're <laughs> okay." That makes sense now. Okay, now I had the world card and the death card. That was McConnell saying, uh, "Enough games. The gamemanship is done. We need to get this done. We need to put in that death card was underneath there. We need to put an end to it. Why?" This craziness that's in your house needs to stop. Okay, this. Thank you. I'm glad I asked this question because this is answering that previous reading. Yeah, we need to bring an end to this this interaction. Uh, this this crazy again the craziness that's going on in the house. We've got to get this done. You know, we've got the, the Republican Party looks really bad that we want to support Israel and we're not getting it done. We're showing our asses to people. Israel needs the money. They're our allies. We want to get this done quickly. You know, stop trying to do your crazy stuff to it. Oh, yeah, there's a betrayal. Um, you know what it, kind of this betrayal is, is that the, I think this is the House Republicans, the Freedom Caucus, feel betrayed by the uh, Senate Republicans. Because, again, the, the Republican leadership is not united. But this is about getting the money through. If this money has to get through, we need to get done it. Get it done now. <clears throat> We're not going to entertain the craziness. You, you tell you deal with your Freedom Caucus folks who are going to vote no. If they vote no on it, well, you know, that's fine. You're betraying that. But then we're going to have to reach out to the Democrats and get the Democrats' support in the House. And the only way you're going to get the Democrats' support in the House is to reduce or get rid of that IRS requirement. And if you do that, then it's a bipartisan support. You know, you're going to get 300 and something House members voting to, to support it, to 400 members. And if the Freedom Caucus wants to vote no, the Freedom Caucus can vote no. But the Democrats will vote yes, the Conservatives will vote yes, and it'll go through. They have no problem supporting Israel. They have no, The House has no problem supporting Israel. It's just this... The thing that you tack on there about, well, all the money has to come from the IRS. That's that's just the stupidity of it. You don't you have a two-person majority in the House. You don't control the Senate. You don't control the presidency. There's just the political unsavviness of Mike Johnson and the Freedom Caucus and the MAGA factions is just mind-blowing. But they're not their serious legislatures. They're just doing it for social media clicks and to show, you know, who the biggest gorilla in the cage is. You know what I mean? All right. Ukraine. Now, Ukraine's going to be kind of a lot of the same thing because 
uh, it has a lot of support, bipartisan support in the Senate. Um, and now, let's see, the House wants to tie Ukraine funding with, you know, a border policy on the southern border because, you know, those Mexican Ukrainians coming across the border from Crimea into Mexico into the United States is a thing. What's the energy around that? The chariot, progression, moving things on. Um, crossed with, okay, there's that planning again. Uh, what's happening next? I think, believe it or not, the Ukraine funding might be a little bit easier to get through. What's, what's, what's underneath that? The Queen of Wands. Um, and there you go with your sunflower, your Ukrainian queen of action. Again, there's a lot of bipartisan support in the Senate for this. Um, it could be that they get some traction on the southern border stuff with the Biden administration. And maybe that would be the parole stuff. They're not going to rebuild the wall, or maybe if they do, it's because there's some contractual obligation that forces the wall to continue to be built. That might be what these two, um, you know, because this guy's standing on a wall. He's standing like on a parapet looking south <laughs> at the, the border and things continuing here. Okay, so what do we got? In the past, there's that same card again. Evaluating the money, looking at it, how can we get what we want out of this deal? King of Cups. I think in this case, Biden is going to be a little bit more willing to um, compromise on what they're um, on what they're asking on the southern border. Uh, probably because he wants to hit Zelensky, and he can compromise a little bit and throw him a, a bone here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think this one's going to get through. I do think this one's going to get through. There will be some compromise. The Republicans are going to get some of the stuff they want out of this. You know, again, this is the the, wel the welcoming card. This is the kicking kicking out of the wedding card. It's also my prison card here. So I think this is for like the parole. I think they'll give up on the parole thing or they'll compromise on the parole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there could be additional stuff, you know, I had over here with this. This could be about, um, there's some wall stuff that has to go through because there's some contractual obligations just just to let it go through. But I think this is about the parole thing and people uh, coming across illegally and early parole leases because you've got the justice card here and you've got that card as well. Yeah, and throwing people out in the cold. Yeah, there's going to be compromise um, or signaling from the Biden administration to um, the, the Senate and House Democrats that he's willing to negotiate a bit on the border to get things moving because he wants that funding for Ukraine. That funding for Ukraine is important. He's been able to end around them a little bit to get that funding on, but if we want to keep the funding going, especially going into the summer, he's willing to compromise on that. And that will kind of call the bluff of... Um, of House Republicans. Because as we know, certainly Senate Republicans seem to be really, really enamored with Russia and doing things to help Russia, including going over to Russia on the 4th of July and, you know, a dozen Republicans going to visit and Rand Paul and, and all these crazy things that the Republicans do to support Russia. Isn't it just interesting how all paths lead back to Russia. All right. So it looks like there will be funding for both Israel and for Ukraine. Israel looks like it'll get through because um, of a bipartisan effort and pushing from Senate Republicans to get Mike Johnson to just agree to it. And uh, with the Ukraine funding, I think Biden is going to agree to some compromises on the southern border just to get that funding through. How does this impact Mike Johnson's ability to get the two budgets uh, passed that they've split up in January uh, 15th or 16th? He has to get the first one done, and then the second one's beginning of February. How is Mike Johnson going to fare on these issues? Queen of Swords. <clears throat> okay. Harsh reality. It, you know, it's just 
hey, you got to get this stuff done. This is what you paid to do. Stop effing around. And there's Mike Johnson just sitting there. La da 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 da. You know, we, I don't think this is him saying, we've got to get this done. This is him kind of smiling like an adult, trying to figure out how to get it done and just kind of enjoying the chaos almost. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is trying to get. <laughs> in one way is Johnson going to try and tell the Freedom Caucus that you know we, no we just got to get this done you can't steal anything you steal the power from the Freedom Caucus I think there the budget has to get done and they're busy playing games uh, I don't think they're going to get another I don't think they're going to get another pass on this is this a shutdown? This might be. They're try. I think they're going to try and again threaten a shutdown. If you don't, you know, if you don't give us what we want, we will shut the government down, and people will lose money. You know, they're basically taking something that doesn't belong to them. Uh, their power with their supermajority of two votes. Mm -hmm. They're trying to really force the issue. In the past, we've got the Six of Pentacles. Now they keep kicking this budget issue down the road they've they've extended it twice on here and they cause a lot of anxiety with the democrats because the freedom caucus and the maga folks don't mind shutting the government down and that's going to hurt people it's going to hurt you know impoverished people harder than it is uh other people and they're relying on the democrats uh empathy to kind of force their hand and get them to agree to things that aren't fair and balanced. <clears throat> Current situation is the nine of coins. Um, don't know if this is, you know, in some ways lobbyists are, are helping drive this because they, um, they like the Trump tax cuts. They don't like what the Democrats would want to do. The simplest thing to do, again, mind you, is just continue the budget that you already have and just move on with it. Um, I'd like to think that that's what this card means, that their simplest path would be <clears throat> to carry on with the previous budget and then we just move on as a country uh, with that. It would be the wisest thing to do. It certainly would be the wisest thing to do. I'm trying really hard not to say Liz Cheney and all this. <laughs> Queen of Swords, which is the same card you would use for Nancy Pelosi, cut from the same cloth versus him. You know. Woman of wealth and power, uh, wisdom, <laughs> been on the Judiciary Committee. Um, to see how it's going on in government. <laughs> oh, how is Johnson going to go with this budget? The wise thing to do would just be carry over the budget. Are they going to be able to do it? The high priest, it would be the wisest thing to do. It would be the just thing to do. It would keep the government funded. Are they going to do it, though? I mean, if I were just looking at these cards straight up, I would say, yeah, it, it looks like that would be the case. But they're trying to get away with something. There's something underhanded underneath all this. Maybe they, you know what it is? Maybe, they, maybe they're agreeing to it and they're trying to sneak stuff into the budget. You know, get all sneaky and in the middle of a paragraph, you add some stuff that would uh, usurp power. They might be trying to get sneaky here. Um, it's stuff may not be legal or it gets caught because folks are actually reading it. Um, I don't think they were shut it down. I was concerned they were going to shut down. I'm not really seeing it. I think they're going to try and get sneaky with it. They, they might get the first one through. Let's see if they get the second one through. 
That's the problem when you don't remember the question <laughs> three minutes after throwing on it. Okay, so on that first one, I think they get that first budget passed. It, it looks like they're going to be able to get that passed uh, on time. Um, they, I mean, they could extend it, but it, I think they're going to get that one passed on time. But I also think that there's going to be some stuff hidden in there. There's some sneakiness going on. It's like they're trying to uh, sneak something past when you're not looking. So like, you know, when you're doing edits of a document and you all think you're working on the same edits and nothing's changed because, you know, you got track changes on. For those of you who've worked, worked with Word documents for track changes, and then you turn it off and you add something in a document and then you turn it back on again after you've made the changes so that nobody knows you've made those changes to it. it it's something like that. It's like they're going to take something that's been decided and insert text in there. So the Democrats, I think, will have to really be on their toes when reviewing this budget. What about the second one? Now Donald Trump's going to have some opinions on the second one. I forget what's the second one, if that's the military one or not. No, I think the military one, it's like the first one's like the you know funding government workers and military and stuff, and then the second one's probably the one that's going to hurt people the most. King of Pentacles and the Republican Party. Yeah, they're going to, I think they'll get that first one through. Um, and that, that underhandedness might just be because that's the one that they feel like they've got the priority on. But I think the second one is where they're going to be a lot more stingy with helping the American people. Yeah. Um, Page of Pentacles. This is where they're going to really want to cut the budget. They want to... You know, there's money in there now and they want to reduce it. They want to turn the king to a page. So this is where they're going to try and make their budget cuts and, and be harder on folks because, you know, the Republican goal is to make the working man poor. In the past, we had the Queen of Pentacles. God, we've got the, the king, the queen, and the page. We've got the whole freaking family in here. Where's the knight? <coughs> queen of Pentacles is... You know, taking care of people, taking care of things, valuing, being practical. Um, in the budgets in the past for, for this, it's to help people out. It's, this is going to be the practical things that helps day-to-day -day people. But this guy is not interested in helping day-to-day -day people. He's interested in himself. And he wants to reduce folks. Uh, he wants to knock, knock down things a peg here. So I think that's where the reduction is going to come in. The current situation is the victory card or the look at me card. I think this is where the Republican Party feels that they, they've got the victory. They've got the messaging. This is where they're going to, to make their stand and show how they're going to cut the budget and be you know fiscally conservative again. This is part of their plan. This is what they want to do. This is what they want to be known for. Um, you know, this is going to be if they can cut the entitlements, <laughs> and I and I'm going to back that phrase up. Not entitlements. This is where they want to cut welfare. This is where they want to cut Social Security. They're not entitlements. The Republicans call them entitlements to downplay them, but they're not entitlements. These are things people have contributed to in their working lives. This is part of their plan. They, I think this is where the Republicans unite. Trump, the MAGA faction, and the conservatives, this is where they unite. This is where they can all agree that we need to cut the government and do our part on this one. The celebration. Am I wrong? Is there a compromise in this budget? I don't think so. I, I really don't think this is where the compromise is. I think this is where the fight is. This Three of Cups is a celebration, but I don't think it's the celebration of people. I think this is um, the celebration of MAGA, the Freedom Caucus, and the Republicans raising their cup together because they find... They go from the two to three. They find their unity. They find their way to bond with each other again. Mm. 
will there be a delay? Let you see me shuffling badly here. Mm, not so badly. Will there be a delay with the second budget? Is are the Republicans going to cut? Is this going to cause um, a government shutdown? I mean, maybe those celebrations are. Maybe they get the Democrats to uh, to concede to some of those cuts. I have a hard time believing that. But let's see. I think that they've got their plan there. They're gonna, they're really going to push that second budget. How are the Democrats going to react to that second budget? Yeah, okay, here we go. So it's the budget, it's the compromise, it's helping poor people. Um, uh, to deal with the devil, Trump. It, uh, this budget's about helping people. And there's some concern that <clears throat> if they compromise on this, what else are they going to compromise on? It's a deal with the devil. This is Trump kind of uh, forcing things through versus um, the Empress, and, uh, the Empress, which is um, wanting to help people and see that everybody has needs. And I pointed this out in the reading yesterday. Underneath the card is the lovers versus the devil. And notice how you have the, the, um, the angelic or fallen angelic entity and the, the woman and the man. <clears throat> this is the Democrats wanting to do things that helps better people. The Republicans want to do things that make people worse. The Democrats have the, um, they want to take care of folks. There's going to be a battle here. Uh, this one's not going to be over with. The, this one's, the Knight of Wands is about the pent-ultimate battle. It means that there's another battle after that one. So I think there's going to be a lot of pushback on that one. Now I want to ask, will this lead to a government shutdown? Will this second budget lead to a government shutdown? It may not. That first one I thought was going to lead to that. I thought I was going to get the answer there. And I didn't see that. And I don't feel it. Maybe the energy's changed. Maybe Mike Johnson will get these budgets through, work with conservatives and Democrats to get them through, and there's no need for Liz Cheney to be the House Speaker. <laughs> Much to the relief of a number of uh, very vocal people in in my uh, my chat. This card keeps wanting to flip up, so here we go. Will this lead to a government shutdown? Knight of Cups. <laughs> there's going to be some bad faith offers coming through, that's for sure. There's the devil card again. Mm. The Hermit, Intemperance, and the World card. Um, something is going on with this second budget that I just feel like the, the Republicans are going to get this thing through. Um, and I think there's going to be cuts in it. The devil gets what they want. Um, the hermits, like, you know, <sighs> what I want to say is it's the Republicans get this through. It would be a party line vote type of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I think the Republicans will finally get it through because they can actually pass it on their end of it. Um the problem is it's shining a light on House Republicans. It's showing who they are. And then you got temperance, which <coughs> temperance is uh, integration and detoxification. So I think what happens is, is that the Republicans do get their budget passed and they get it to the Senate. But when it comes to the Senate, you know, the Senate's got to debate this thing. And talk about it, and I think they're going to detoxify what the GOP is doing, and then try and close, the, seal the deal on that one. And again, I think there'll be pressure from McConnell onto the uh, House Republicans to get whatever compromise the, the Senate puts in there to get it done. 
So um, it, I'm thinking the energy's changed on on the budget. Um, I think uh, Johnson will be able to get all the Republicans to agree to pass the budget. For however he does that, I don't know, but it looks like he'll be able to get them to agree on that one. It'll get it to the Senate, and the Senate will probably make some changes and send it back to the House. And I think it gets it passed at that point. I don't know how that looks because we've seen what the last couple of budget fights have looked like and they've been an absolute mess. And Johnson has um, been earning the ire of the Freedom Caucus. So I don't know how he's going to get around this one. I'll throw on it again as we get uh, back from the Christmas break and we're in the beginning of uh, January and we're like getting a week away from the budget. Let's see how those uh, pan out. But that's kind of the, the view on it now. It's interesting. It's like there's there's energetic shift like the Democrats might let them show their asses to people, show them exactly who they are, especially in this election cycle. We'll see if that's the case. Anyways, thank you for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you for all your kind words and everything you do to feed the YouTube algorithm so that my video makes it out to a wider range audience, to new viewers, new subscribers to the channel, somebody who just recently stumbled onto this channel. Welcome to the channel. I hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.